Welcome to TJD Movie Reviews, episode 22. We watched Carriers. I'm Ty. Jake. And I'm Drew. Yeah, Carriers. It was a 2009 film that was actually re- re- uh, requested requested by Craig, but it was filmed in 2006. Oh. It was, but they waited until... 2009, because that's when Chris Pine, who's one of the lead stars, had Star Trek come out. So they kind of cabin in the woods hit, I guess, because that movie was shelved until Chris Hemsworth was Thor. That movie was shelved? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. They didn't mm-hmm. know it was really well. well. It, yeah. They were just banking on the success of that blockbuster movie in order to... Yep. Wow. I didn't... No. Well, that's like well, a, I would say they capitalized on they it. They capitalized on the it. Yeah, sure. Like, they um, probably would have put it out, but they just were like, oh, shit, this is our moment. Like, yeah. Just same with Envy. When Jack Black had School of Rock come out, they released Envy because they knew it was a piece of shit film. What a great movie. That movie is a piece of crap. I've never seen it. It would be on loop in my personal hell. Oh. Yeah. Keep that in mind. At first I thought you said lube. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He'd use it for lube in his yeah. personal hell. <laughs> Jack Black and Ben Stiller all down there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. That sounds like a terrible combination. <laughs> uh, the film, uh, it's actually really short. I think it's one of the shortest movies besides The Killing Joke we watched last week. It was 85 minutes. So Pretty quick. Yeah. Um, stars Chris Pine, obviously. Piper Parabo. If I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm sorry. She was from Coyote Ugly and that terrible, terrible The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle live-action oh, film. Wasn't Whoopi Goldberg in that? She probably has a cameo. Wouldn't surprise me. I It's been years since I've seen that, and it was terrible back then. I saw Dudley Do-Right in the movie theater. <laughs> Brendan Fraser? You yeah. saw it in the theater? I, saw I didn't the know it was in the theater. theater. You paid money for that? I didn't pay money <laughs> You made your parents pay money for that? No, I think the daycare lady took us. Oh. I was like, what the fuck did I do to you? <laughs> <laughs> God, are you up there? Because you're obviously not. <laughs> what are you talking about? Sarah Jessica Parker? Did she play the horse? <laughs> <laughs> I was going <laughs> to make that joke. Oh, Were you? Yes. I really don't remember her in the movie. Yeah, she was the love interest. Yeah, Brendan Fraser fed her carrots. <laughs> <laughs> he was in love with the horse the whole time. And then was it uh, Alfred Molina? Isn't that the guy from Spider-Man 2, right? Doc Ock. Doc Ock. Yeah, he was Maybe. the he was the bad uh, the, the the bad guy. God, I can't talk. I thought you were gonna say the Batman. <laughs> the like, Batman. Fucking, I don't remember this movie at all. <laughs> no, the bad guy. Uh, what? You don't yeah. remember the crossover where Doc Ock was Batman? That'd be weird. That would be, but I mean, Doc Ock did become Spider Man for a little bit. Yeah. What? Yeah. In the comics, that's what they had that run called Superior Spider Man. Holy shit! I didn't know any of that. Yeah. Change all the conceptions you used to know about Spider Man. It was <laughs> stupid. I I bought like the first three <laughs> issues. I bought the first three issues and I was like, I hate this. This is. I, I this just is like dumb. Drew goes, forget everything you know, and you're like, it was stupid. <laughs> Uh, so none of this has anything to do with Carriers. No, so we, uh, we we keep doing this all the time. What's Carriers about? All right. Um, carriers is a... Uh, I'm just going to read from Wikipedia here because they describe it best. It's a post-apocalyptic horror film. Horror? Pre- uh, there's horror elements to it. Uh, it's that Asian girl <laughs> and the ghost again. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. So... Uh, what happens here is Chris Pine, his brother, who's played by Lou Taylor Pucci, who was an Evil Dead, Chris Pine's girlfriend, who's Piper Parabo, and then Emily Van Camp, who like is kind of the brother's boyfriend or boyfriend. <laughs> oh my gosh! Whoa! That's a totally different movie. Girlfriend, uh, but not. They know each other from Yale, but that they don't. They don't really even know. touch each other the whole movie. I know. But, so she showed zero interest. Mm, but I think that's a girl that he saw in like orientation and was like, oh. We have to save her. Go back to my dorm and masturbate to that. 
and then all the hell broke loose, and he's just been writing that dream. Is that is that why you didn't go to college? You're like, I could just stay home and masturbate instead of going into my room? Thanks for telling the listeners I didn't go to college. <laughs> I just lost all my credibility. <laughs> well, you lost two bets tonight, so... Yeah. I murder kids out of necessity, <laughs> but... But these four are traveling along. They're just trying to stay away. That This virus... Whatever it is. Zika. It's not Zika. They don't actually have a name for it. No, they don't. They don't they don't have a name at all. They just call it the virus. I didn't get anything. Like like I don't know how long it went on. I don't know how long they've been traveling since the shit hit the fan. I think it's been a couple months. Because okay. all the phones have gone down, all electricity's down. I think it's just been like a couple months. Am I correct in I, I thought I heard him say this, but they go down to the beach. And get supplies and then drive back to wherever they're from. Why don't you just stay at the fucking no, beach? No, no. They're saying when they get to the beach... That's where they're staying. What they're going to do is then go for... So they had already been out there to get shit. No, no. Okay. No, they were going to go to the beach and that's where they were going to set up their like safe zone. That's where I was lost. I'm like, why the fuck did you guys leave if you've already been there and got shit? Like- so let me get into this. So these four are traveling along... They their whole thing is they're trying to get to Turtle Beach because that's where the two brothers they have a lot of great memories together with their family. They say no one will be there anymore. They pro- people probably left thinking that it'd be safer somewhere else, but they're just like, hey, we'll hang out by the ocean. We'll scavenge for food. We that that's their whole purpose is to get these themselves to Turtle Beach to then live there and start a new life, maybe start a community. I doubt a community, but at least for themselves. And along the way, um, they keep running into people who either have the virus or they. you learn a little bit more about the virus. From my perspective, it seems the virus can take anywhere from a couple days to a couple weeks to take. Like, to take effect, it, it's usually a couple days you can notice it. But before it starts, like, tearing you down, it can be weeks. But because they run into the guy from Law and Order SVU, our favorite show, Christopher Maloney. Yep, who uh, is sitting in the middle of a highway with his daughter. Um, by the way, before I get too far into this, I'm going to say spoilers right now. So obviously, we're we're going to talk about this film. Just letting people know. Maybe if you want to watch this film before we talk about it, more power to you. If you but if you just want to listen along, you don't care about seeing this film. Whatever. Right. But his daughter, they he's looking for gas, and his daughter is in the back seat. And she's infected, they know, because she's wearing a air mask? Yeah, like the... the like mask. a painter's mask, or a drywaller's mask, I guess. And it's covered in blood. She's been coughing it up. And I say, I think it takes a couple weeks, because they get... Christopher Maloney, they, they take over his vehicle because they avoid him, but they, they destroy their car. They blow their engine. and But they take his vehicle, rub it down. They drive to the town he wants to go to because they say there's a cure. With Maloney and his daughter still yeah. in it. They, they, they kind of t- tape up a... The back kinda, seat. Yeah, they, they put up like a little filter between them. It's, like it's a Tahoe, so... It's a, like a Chevy Tahoe, so yeah, they put like a plastic barrier, and so they're sitting in the back end. But, you know, everybody's looking for a cure, and I, I'm i getting a little more into the plot than I mean to, but to explain my thought of how long it takes is, they get to this high school where they say there's this cure, and this doctor's like, how long's your daughter had it? And he's like, she's been showing signs for like a week, and he's like, okay. And he goes, all right, bring her in. But the doctor's obviously just going to kill the rest of the people that are in there. He's like, there's no use. We had a cure. It helped people for three days, and then it came back. So, is he wrong to kill them? No, I, I really don't think so. He's I, he's saving them, but at the same time, maybe you should allow them to have their own choice. But I don't know. I I can jump both sides of the fence. I guess I can confidently say that in a situation like this, I'd have no problems killing a bunch of kids. <laughs> Yeah, I've been not. practicing for years. <laughs> Jesus. I like that line the doctor says where he's he's like sometimes um, 
like what does he say like pain management or treatment is just prolonging it, inevitable death or something like that uh, I think it was something like um, I didn't sometimes it. it's it's harder to choose the um, hardest way to or a more painful way to die he said sometimes life is cho- choosing a more painful, painful way, way to, to die, die. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah that was way more eloquent than he, I put it he's giving all these kids like the only people that are left in this besides the doctor is a bunch of like little kids and he's going to give them juice that's laced with bleach so yeah but their teeth will be so white wow wow I'm just I don't know what to say (laughs) you're digesting yeah no words but yes so the rest of this movie then after that point just follows these four and their goal of trying to get to Turtle Beach and your mission is stay alive yep and don't touch anyone who's sick which they most of them fail but because they're fucking stupid yeah well the way the only real way to get infected is by breathing in actually I couldn't even tell that because they shared that vehicle with the girl and yeah I know she's wearing the mask but they didn't have an issue with her it was when the girl finally spit on one of them coughed up blood is when they had an issue to be fair, she pulled back the the filter and she didn't have her mask on. And yeah. Plus, that doesn't explain Pine because Pine didn't touch anything. But he did touch her. His and he touched that exact spot she got spit on. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Yeah. I was thinking when he got shot, but yeah, he. Yeah. So. You're right. Yeah. So see, he kissed that exact spot she had. So. Yep. And she probably didn't shower or anything. That's why I said she should have doused herself in bleach. She's a fucking bitch. Yeah. Okay, let's let's go pros, cons. This is our first movie we should state that the three of us had never seen before. Yeah, Ghostbusters you and I hadn't seen, but Drew wasn't there. So this is the first we've all been together that none of us really had seen it. Killing joke, but that was... Yeah. We've read the novel, so we know mm-hmm. what happens right. and shit. So. Uh, con, uh, all the characters are basically fucking retarded. Wow. Yep. Keep using that word. Oh, fuck. I didn't realize I said it. <laughs> They're really fucking stupid. Uh, they just do nonsensical shit. Like, mm-hmm. their their masks were driving me crazy. Like, they're, they'd have scenes where they had it on. They'd go into a new building they'd never seen before, and they'd have them fucking off. Like, yeah. The fucking round over a swimming pool. Like, are you a stupid asshole, Chris Pine? What the fuck are you thinking? He was very arrogant, but I think his whole thing is... He was trying to make light of it to deal with the situation. Like, I'm not saying it's a smart way to do it, but I think knowing what he saw, knowing what he's done, he's doing something so that he can get through it. Yeah. I mean, you you had Pine and the swimming pool thing really bothered me. The constant face mask fuckery, like, I'm going to wear it right here, but I'm not, not going to wear it where I probably should be wearing it. Uh, fucking Piper Parabo going, hey, you know, the girl's choking and then getting a bunch of blood coughed in her face, not fucking telling anybody about it, and then just riding along with them like nothing happened, and then acting all hurt when they abandon your ass on the side of the road, like, you fucked everything up. Like you you put everybody at risk mm-hmm. because you're a selfish cunt. Wow. Is she not? I wouldn't go that far with that word. I would. That's why when he was cold, I was like, he's absolutely in the right here. I think he was in the you, right to do what he You did. let me kiss your fucking face after some little diseased brat fucking coughed blood on it? You're done. Well, yeah, he's, he, he was done. Yeah. <laughs> He was also done. <laughs> I, I didn't feel bad at all when he's like, get out of the car. And no. she's like, oh, I'll ride in the back. And he's like, that's not what I fucking said. You're done. You're walking. Goodbye. Uh, that was dumb. The fucking kid with the shotgun not shooting the dog the moment he fucking saw it when it's eating a dead body because I'm guessing a bite from a dog would fucking... You're done. Yep. No, he, he's got to let the dog attack him first. That's stupid. Like, as cold as it sounds, if you're in these situations... You don't have time to wait and see what the environment or something is going to do. You need to be proactive or you're going to be fucking dead. 
And that's why I didn't buy that any of these idiot fucking teenagers, or however old they're supposed to be, had lived this long. The only um, reason I think they had lived that long is because of Chris Pine. Like, yeah, he, he's an idiot, but he knew there are no rules. Right, and he seemed like a cold asshole, but I was like, no, he's doing it right. Yeah. Other than being a dipshit over a fucking swimming pool in which he doesn't know what's in it. Um, yeah, it, it drove me crazy. Well, you should like, be in fight or flight mode. Like all Constantly. the time, mm-hmm. all the time. There's yeah. no, there's no letting up in an environment like that. I got another con. The whole beginning is him and Piper Bravo mouth fucking each other. Like Jesus Christ. I don't know if it was just me, but I, it didn't bother me at all. No. I didn't care. You little had a little chuck going on. No, I just it didn't bother me. I heard <laughs> some fat noises coming from over here. Yeah. Well, that was Jake when he. Uh, that was, yeah, was, that was during the high school part when he saw the little kids in the bleach. Getting murdered? <laughs> bleach cool. Wow, we're going to cut that. <laughs> <laughs> I took it to a place I dare not go. Wow. Wow. That's saying a lot. That's new territory. I don't fuck kids. <laughs> I didn't say you were fucking them. Okay. The thought of them dying is what got you hard. Oh, uh, okay. Well, you're not. <laughs> that's, a, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. I never said you did that to kids. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's still getting cut. <laughs> I, I got a con. Uh, Chris Pine's little brother's girl pal. Didn't do shit. She was like, she was okay. basically Can- a non factor. Can I step in quick? We didn't really say that who that she is. I, Emily Van Camp is her name. She is Agent Thirteen or what? Whatever. Peggy Carter's granddaughter or whatever. Yeah, the from, blonde in Avengers. Uh, or you know the Captain America movies. Yeah, two and three at least. She's his new love interest. Uh, okay. you, you'd recognize her face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she was pretty much a non-factor in this movie. She would. She would try and push. Uh, God, I can't remember the brother's name. It's not Brian. Danny or Danny. Yeah, Brian is uh, Chris Pine. Pine. Yeah. So it's she'd, Danny. She would push Danny to do stuff. She wouldn't even say anything. She would just like give she, him a look. Yeah, she'd give him a nudge or a look or something, and he would do it like a little lap dog. He's so pussy whipped. Oh yeah, for sure. And he wasn't. He wasn't like he was getting any or that <laughs> they like, were in a relationship or anything. But right. at the end, she was right. Like when they. They come to terms having to leave Chris Pine because he kissed Piper Parabo, so he's infected. Right. And she is right. You She's, need to pull your weight, though. Yeah, she doesn't pull her she weight. She could have stepped in and been like, hey, I'm not going to have you like later on, your brother, like, hey, I can do this for you, rather than making you fucking shoot your own brother. That... Like, that what? and she was just a she was just a shell of a, a character. Like there was nothing to her. That nah. she just kind of moped around. Mm-hmm. She, yeah, she she didn't even seem like she wanted to be there. It's like these people went out of their way to save you. Show some you know decency towards these people. Like she'd laugh with them, but she usually didn't talk or anything. Nah, she was quiet. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying you have to sleep with Danny. I'm just saying. Thank him for taking him with you. He could have let you stay at Yale and I'm die. saying she has to sleep with Danny. Well, yeah, Danny, I guarantee Danny in the back of his mind is like, it's all going to be worth it. <laughs> There's going to be fucking on that beach. Has to be. Well, and see, it was weird because when he's doing his voiceover at the end, he's like, I'll forever be alone now, or something like that. Another. Forever alone? <laughs> That's another con. <laughs> that ending shit. I was like, whatever. You fucking get over it. <laughs> oh, I'm on a beach. My but, brother and I played here. I'll never get laid. <laughs> I could have gone to Yale. Oh, bother. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go with a pro, because Jake just seemed to be shitting all over this film. Um, I thought there was pretty good tension. Even though, like, some of these characters don't seem redeemable, there's still some pretty high tension in a lot of these scenes. Yeah, like, I'll, I'll give you that. Like that doctor with the kids scene. That is, I was like, what? What is going to happen here? What right. is he going to do? Mm-hmm. Um, the the casino scene or the the condo scene, whatever that was. The uh, the scene with him leaving Piper. It was yeah. like that was intense. I got a pro. I thought Pine was good. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. 
the uh, scene where he kind of pins the younger brother up against the car and he's like telling him all the shit that he had to do to get here and he's mm-hmm. kind of like what the fuck have you done like I got us here um, even though his character was kind of a dick all the way down to basically the end when he's like hey you take me with you or you shoot me and that's the only way you're getting the key like and he even but he even acknowledges he's like I'm dead already yeah he had the he was the most believable in terms of this is the situation and I'm gonna do whatever I need to do to stay alive like he was he was actively doing shit for most of the movie Mm -hmm. everybody else is kind of just along for the ride I wish the other characters would have taken upon the same uh, fervor that that mine did I will say the Emily Van Camp's character who I don't remember her damn name I don't think anybody does because she's so forgettable. I'm gonna say I can look it up quick. The blonde uh, girl, Kate. Kate, sure. sure. Um, she has like a real change, and you said, Jake, you said you could believe it because she goes from like I'm not gonna do anything, I'm not gonna touch anything or anyone, I'll barely laugh, to then she's like we near need the to abandon end. This person, yeah, and she, yeah. she, we need to abandon this person. Yeah. Then it gets to Pine, and she's like. We need to get rid of him, but or or when they are trying to get gas and Pine does this kind of out of character thing, but like it made sense for his character to do it, and she's like, "Yeah, it needed to be done." It's like, wow, this girl went from really shy to like, you know, she comes fuck off, everyone else. She comes off as a fucking sociopath, mm-hmm. like textbook. Like, oh, yeah. I'm gonna do whatever I need to do, but I'm gonna manipulate everybody from behind the scenes to get what I want. While I do the bare minimum. I'm not going to put myself at risk. I'm not going to go investigate that building. I'm not going to go look for supplies. She just plants little seeds and makes everybody else do the work. The only thing she did that was of risk is she kept checking every phone. Yeah. Is that really risk, though? She was with people the whole time. I know. But I'm just saying, you know, those phones are disgusting. Who, Who really wants to touch a pay phone? Well, that's why they had the bleach and shit. I know. She, she, she was wiping down everyone. every phone, but... <laughs> oh, that's like, you can pick it up. You don't have to put it to your ear. <laughs> Another con. Piper Paribos characters. My God. Like, I hate her the most out of everybody in the movie. Just because she didn't say anything? Yeah, I mean... But think of almost every problem they ran into... Like, from her fucking with Chris Pine and them swerving the car and almost contaminating oh everybody my God. to the incident happening that basically snowballed into almost everybody that died in the movie was because she was a moron. But at the same time, can't you say it's a fight or flight type of thing and she knew if she tells anyone she's dead? I mean, she's dead already, but... But we talked about that. It isn't necessary. Like, they could have put her in the same situation. Oh, she spit on you. Well, you know, to be you know cautious, we're going to put you back there with them since they fucked off at the exact same time anyway. Remember, Maloney and the girl mm-hmm. leave when they get back to the SUV. They clean the entire back. She could have sat there. They could have just taken her with and been like, you know what? We'll give it a couple days. If you show any symptoms or anything, then we're going to keep you back there. We might have a hard decision to make whatever, but if we give you some time and you're not showing anything, you can fucking ride up front with us. It wasn't a necessary thing. You need to be honest about that shit. Mm -hmm. I even told you, if it was us, I'd be like, hey, I was an idiot. I did something I shouldn't have. She spit on me. You're going to have to do what you need to do. You're you're putting other lives in jeopardy. Yeah. Especially people you care about. It's selfish. It is. But the thing is, isn't that kind of what... People can be selfish. And we said these... Can't you say it then a pro as well? Because that has been her character. From be, the point we saw her beginning with, to that point, she seemed to only really care about her or her and Chris Pine. I, would, I wouldn't say that's a con. I would say that's almost, that was realistic. That's I mean, that's a, that's yeah. a, a, a character trait that is, that is realistic. And, and that's why I'm saying, like, yeah, it's a con because she's a dumbass. But isn't a pro the way Piper then made... They made sure Piper's character stayed that way throughout the film. I don't know. Maybe. Like, it just... As Drew said, instead of a pro or a con, it's just a realistic trait. 
it, it's a flaw in human nature. I suppose anybody could have done it. But. That and it's a it's a plot device used to further the right. story. The story. Yeah. It just drove me fucking crazy. Well, yeah. Oh yeah. I, it, 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 it's, it's like when you watch any horror movie, you're like, don't open that fucking door. You open the damn door. Oh, now there's a thousand year old demon out. Uh, you're murdered. Well, kind of had to know that was coming. She, <laughs> she was insufferable. Yeah, I, she was just annoying. Yeah. But if, if you're Chris Pine, because after she's in, infected, sorry, I covered up my mouth quick, after she's infected and she knows it and she just starts acting weird, like she won't let Chris Pine near her, she won't let anyone near her. That that was another con for me. I was I like, by his stupidity. Yeah, because this is a guy who has been cautious about everything. Right. And now all of a sudden this woman that you've done everything with is now acting distant. I mean, he he's lying in a sand trap and he's going to take her hand and she extends a golf club because she doesn't want to touch him. Like, that's not a red flag. Like, why don't you all of a sudden want to touch me? We were just mouth-fucking each other yesterday. I think and, that's where they should have had the conversation. Mm-hmm. At the at the bare minimum. Yeah. Pine then, would have been then, like, why aren't you touching me? And, and then he grabs her and kisses her cheek and she yeah. freaks the fuck out. You should instantly know right there, like, oh shit, she's probably infected. Like, something fucking happened like, between this point at, and this point. When they were in the kitchen at that condo, I understood, like, because he did something that was kind of reprehensible. What he did. He left. He leaves Maloney and the girl. Right. It seemed like they had that conversation all the time, though. Like, towards mm-hmm. the beginning, he'd do something that he'd be like, Oh, I know that I'm a dipshit, but like, you know, aren't I a lovable dipshit or whatever? And he kind of sweet talk his way, and then they'd be doing their shit again. And I, I don't know. Maybe it's just a game that they played, and he just adjusted to it. And he's yeah. like, oh, she's going through her bullshit again. See, at first I would, but that golf course, excuse me, that golf course, I would have been like, what is going on here? Right. What are you mad at? Or what are you pissed at? Or what's going on? So, I think he should have beat her down with the golf club right there. Well, he didn't know. Why would he do, Why would he grant theft auto her? If you're afraid to touch me, then you're guilty of something. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to touch you, Jake. That then, hurts. Then, <laughs> then you're guilty. Sinner. Uh... trying to think pro uh, I already said suspense the length yeah it, you know what the length is a good pro it's, it's about the right length for a mm-hmm. movie like that yeah didn't it, overstay it's welcome yeah was it's, it too brief to get a grip I keep interrupting go ahead <laughs> no it's fine you just are a dick but um, no the, the length is good because you start off a little slow but with the home videos, I'll agree with you. They, they, they kind of... I know they're trying to set up that they're brothers, but these brothers don't even seem like they're really brothers. They seem like they're distant. That's why when it started, I'm like, I'm docking a point for opening <laughs> with home video footage. <laughs> but it's once so played out, and but, it never pays off hardly, like, ever. Mm-hmm. It keeps a good pace just through it. Um, yeah, there's a lot of driving scenes, but there's usually something going on, or it's like something's happening right after. So it keeps a good pace. Good, it's a good 85 minutes. Any, yes. <laughs> any pros for you, Drew? Um, I I'd probably say the pacing, just like you just said. Mm. Um, God, I'm trying to think of. Stuff that was that jumped out at me that was worth mentioning. Um, the horse. I thought the horses gave great acting in this film. Yeah, Sarah Jessica Parker. She did not appear in this film. They trotted her out there. <laughs> <laughs> Which, of course, you guys argue with me about if a horse can be milked or not. I don't know why. You can milk anything with nipples. Yeah. Greg. <laughs> I have nipples. Jake, can you milk me? Probably. Actually, yeah, men can be milked. Why are we talking about this? I don't know, because Drew was thinking, so I just thought something during the movie that we talked about. <laughs> are we at the end of our rope already? Uh, 
Did we have much of a rope to begin with? <laughs> um, it's a philosophical question for another this, day. Is this the untimely end of Millhouse? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, okay, so these they start off with some random just car. You don't know really what they have. But just some sedan. It's a Mercedes Benz. Is it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Thank you. I didn't actually see it. Spray painted Road Warrior on the hood. Mm -hmm. um, then they end up with a Tahoe. So, gas is in short supply in this film. Yep. What? Yeah. So, say this kind of happened. You know, what vehicle are you guys choosing for an apocalyptic world? Civic. Honda Civic? They get good mileage and they yeah. fucking live through anything, so. And they're not a fucking Prius. <laughs> you get a smart car. <laughs> Souped up smart car. <laughs> I got nitrous in the back. And then, like, <laughs> you put it in and then it just tilts up. <laughs> I'm pushing 25 miles per hour. <laughs> Paul Walker sitting shotgun. Oh, wow. So this is a zombie apocalypse. Absolutely. <laughs> That's in bad taste. Uh, yeah. It's been a while. I was gonna say I, I would take something like a Tahoe. Like yeah, gas is. I don't know. Maybe not something so big, but something you can fill a lot of people in or a lot of supplies in, in case something happens. You can use it as a makeshift tent. How about a Mercury Villager? <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's a van. <laughs> is that one of those that had like the TV built into it? I don't think so. Oh, okay. It's like a soccer mom type of van. Hmm. I was going to say, I want, a, I want like a Winnebago. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Take a Razor scooter. If, if there was a po post-apocalyptic world, how long do you think you'd last? Like, if it, it was something like this. Where, where do we hear about the news? Um, say it starts in North Carolina. Okay, but we're like at home and we know mm -hmm. that it's coming. Yeah. Ugh. <sighs> I'm, I'm trying to think of the most realistic answer. Um, I don't know. What do you go if you already have an answer? See, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a desolate place. I know nobody is. Grab supplies, guns, ammunition, and I'm holding up there. So anybody comes around, no questions asked. <laughs> Actually, I might ask questions. But, but how long? How long would I stay there? Isn't that what you asked? How long we would last? Or yeah. What would we do? So I would, I would, that's what I would do. And I'm hoping that allows me to last as long as I can. So. What kind of outbreak are we talking? The same type of shit? Yeah. Maybe? A viral outbreak. Well, we got guns. Cause like, no offense, metropolis cities are probably the worst place to be. Just go back out to the country. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, places like Nebraska would probably be better off. Yeah. Because everyone already has a gun. If you have a farm, or you have people who have farms nearby, you can use all that stuff. So The only problem is, is you better be stocked up, because I don't think you're going to be doing a lot of scavenging. No, it'd take a while. That's... More when I'm struggling to kind of think, like, getting the shit to stay alive would be the hardest part. Because we're not doomsday preppers or anything. We don't have a fucking bunker or anything laid out. Speak for yourself. Oh, you got a, do you got a doomsday bunker? Yeah, my name's John Goodman. <laughs> uh, Cloverfield Lane reference. Yeah. <laughs> I was just gonna say something, but I'm not gonna. Oh, or we can hold ourselves, hold ourselves up in a mall somewhere. I don't know. I'd say at least a month or two, for sure. Because you are right. We are kind of in a prime state. Doesn't Walking Dead take place in Nebraska too? Like no, or no. at least they're here for a little bit. No, they're. It's down in Georgia. It starts in Georgia. Yeah, I don't know. In the I never. I haven't read any of the comics, so well, I don't know if they make it. But I know there's a reference to Nebraska. They're like. When I go to Nebraska, I hear, you know, it's... Well, I think safe. the show had an episode called Nebraska, Because too. that's what they say. Is they're like, hey, boys, why... Because they meet some strangers, like, you know, maybe you should travel to Nebraska. I hear it's safe up there. Well, I thought Herschel's farm in the show was in nope. Nebraska. And it's in Georgia. No, they uh, they go from Georgia, and then they meet some people who say they found a cure, and they start moving north to they D.C. They go to D.C. 
And in terms of where they go from there, I don't really remember. But no, yeah, they, they had an episode titled Nebraska because they, they tell those guys they should go to Nebraska. Well, it's either here nor there. I, I think we're in one of the better states to be in if something like that were to happen. Because mm-hmm. we can actually get away from the huge populations. Yeah, that's where stuff thins out out in western Nebraska. Like, being dropped in New York City with something like this happening... It'd be a fucking nightmare. Yeah, it'd be crazy. I would not want to... Feeding I would... frenzy. Oh, yeah. What? Feeding frenzy. Oh, yeah. I mean, if it was zombies. Zombies. But... Zombies, yeah. I can't imagine what it would be like if all these fucking mouth breathers had this airborne disease that they were <laughs> coughing all over the place. One person gets it in New York... It's it spreads like wildfire. Oh yeah. It's not even not even a joke. <laughs> that and yeah, they don't say where any of this started, how it started. It just and, and you know what? I kind of think that's a pro that they don't they don't delve into how this all started. They're just like, hey, this happened. It's here. But also, had they given me a little bit of backstory, I might have been like, well, if it just recently happened, that explains why they don't know what the fuck they're doing, mm-hmm. or why they might make a stupid decision. It's like, well, they probably haven't been, you know, they haven't come up to that problem to solve. But since I don't know, I'm like, well, you're driving down the road like not. I, the way I t- interpreted that, it opens with them driving down the road acting like everything's normal. I interpreted, okay, then... It must have been going on long enough that they're at the point where they're trying to revert back to acting like normal people. So I guess some time has gone by. It would have to be because there's no, like, you don't get any feel of, like, uh, a government or a, uh, you know, there's there's no system in place um, for, for treatment or anything. They go to that one place that they say it's like a care center or something like that where they mm-hmm. might get synthesized to cure... And yeah, a car outside's burnt out, and but you other don't, stuff is stolen off an army vehicle. You don't see, you don't really see any anybody of of government note or anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they have, it has to be a ways out from when the virus. That, that's why I say out. I think it's been a couple months at least. So maybe even more, but yeah, it, and like the disease. I mean, we didn't really talk about it. What it does is. It kind of just, it, it starts out like looking like a bruise and like veins around it like start surfacing and then kind of spreads throughout the body. Eventually you start coughing up blood. Um, Real lethargic. You start getting very lethargic. Uh, bleeding from the ears, bleeding from the eyes, bleeding from the nose. And you kind of just die. But like they run into one guy who's in a car, like they're trying to get gas. And in the car, they see a body, and it looks like it just been overcame with the disease. Like the whole body is just red and blue and puffy. Guy's still alive. And I was like, oh, that's a terrible way to go. Am I the only one that was hoping that he was like a he was like a zombie type guy that he was gonna wake up and eat him? Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't have been surprised at that point if. If it had happened. Well, the thing is, is they cast this movie... Or I shouldn't say they cast. They they set this movie up as a horror movie. Yeah. And I wouldn't say that it's a horror movie at all. I mean, there are, there are elements, but it's it's not a horror movie. I'd say it's more thriller than anything. Yeah. I kind of see the horror to it, because you're in, a, you're in a situation where there is no society anymore. Where you're having to make these choices that... A normal day you never thought you would have to make. But that's just lack but, of... That's, that's but, suspense, though. That's but, not... But you're not even letting me finish my damn point. You guys no, are just jumping ahead. on me. No. <laughs> but then you, everywhere you turn, someone could be infected. And you want to trust them, but you can't. And at every turn, then, that disease that they're infected with that they may not be telling you about can kill you. But are you filled with horror when somebody gets infected? Yeah. You were. When Piper got it. I was like, but nobody else. Yeah, then like, I wouldn't call it a horror. No, movie. I, no I'm saying when Piper got it, I was kind of like, okay, that happened. But then Chris Pine got it, and I was like, oh shit! Like 
I didn't think he would get it. I was like, maybe he is immune. I don't know. They're just, they're, I think it's more of a... I think it can still be classified as a horror movie. Just because the way this virus can spread and there's no cure for it. I disagree. Yeah, yeah. I wholeheartedly disagree. Ah, whatever. I thought it was more of a... You're kind of on the edge of your seat wondering how it's going to happen or who it's going to happen to. But when it happened, you're not like, oh, fuck, like horror and like lack of government and all that shit like yeah the situation would suck but like there's not really like horror like there's not dread really where you're like oh fuck like I don't know I didn't I didn't feel that once would you consider Gone Girl more of a horror movie? absolutely really I still haven't seen Gone Girl so I can't say but that movie's genuinely terrifying it'll (laughs) make you afraid to pull your penis out anywhere it's true. Well, shouldn't I be afraid to pull my penis out anywhere? Why are you afraid to pull your penis out? I'm not going to go out in the public and just pull <laughs> my penis out. Yeah, but why would you be afraid? I mean, you could do it. <laughs> you think someone's going to drive by with a machete and just pack it up? And what if that happened? I just realized why you think it's a horror movie. You and I classify fear as two very different things. <laughs> He used to have that problem back when he was a kid, and his parents go, no, don't do that, otherwise yeah. some guy will come up out with a yeah. machete and hack it so off. Tim Curry dressed as uh, Pennywise to come by and bite it off. We all float down here, Georgie. <laughs> nice dick, <laughs> <tip>, kid. <laughs> oh. I, I mean, I'm not going to walk into a, a meat packing plant and be like, oh, here it is. But that's not fear! <laughs> that's just... That isn't fear. You'd be afraid to take your dick out in a meatpacking plant. Why a meat? Pa- Why is the meatpacking? <laughs> you plant said there? anywhere, so I'm just saying. I'm picking. Places Do you have that a fear anywhere. of meatpacking plants? <laughs> no, I have a fear of machinery. <laughs> well, yeah, don't dangle it over a fucking meat grinder. <laughs> Why are we talking about taking our dicks out? Because <laughs> he talked. Because you asked. We're trying to get to the root of fear, like. The movie with Marky Mark. Like, when you take a piss at a urinal, are you filled with fear? Like, oh shit, hope nothing happens to my dick in the two seconds that it's outside of my pants. <laughs> no. Okay. Then you're not autistic. <laughs> Wait, what? I don't know. I don't I don't get the fear, though. So you, you would randomly, you would walk naked around anywhere and have no fear? If that virus was going around, I wouldn't. Fear though, like, what do you, what do you mean by fear? Like, it isn't something I would willingly want to do, but I wouldn't be like terrified that I was doing it. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay. Like, it's one thing to be embarrassed or to have feelings of like, I wish I wasn't doing this, but it's another to be. I don't know. I think I classify fear as a more specific thing than you. And that's possible. I'll show you fear. You talk to the kids that lived. There are none. <laughs> Jeez. Now you should be scared. I'm the kid that lived. Teacher becomes student. Nope. Student becomes, <laughs> student becomes teacher. Teacher uh, becomes student. That's not how that works. No. That's not how any of this works. Look at me. I'm the teacher now. <laughs> yep. Oh boy, this is gonna be. Uh, how do we edit this pod? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. We'll we'll be able to do it. Um, yeah, this this film, like I said though, it it was made in '06, but not released till 2009. It made um, 5.8 million worldwide. Did it get a wide release? No. Okay. It was it was a very limited release. I guess I don't remember hearing about. I it never heard about this movie. Yeah, um, it has a 64% on Rotten Tomatoes from all critics, but from user reviews, it has a 39%. That's weird. Yeah, yeah I thought so too. And then on IMDb, it has a 6. Just a just a 6. But, and there was nothing I could find on here. We did find one continuity error in this film. Yep. <laughs> which was a stupid one, but we found it. Uh, when Chris Pine falls into the sand trap, it looks like he has some sort of cloth or thing hanging off of him, 
and then it goes to a wide shot and it's gone. I thought it was like, it looked like a fucking like a, a tranquilizer dart or something <laughs> like that. I was like, what the fuck is that on his yes, chest? They, he got he got hit with a drink. <laughs> You're funny, man. <laughs> you got a fucking dart in your neck. <laughs> we just thought of the same exact thing. Yeah. <laughs> you're uh, crazy. I like you, but you're crazy. <laughs> oh, man. I haven't seen old school in years. Hold up. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Good. Uh, I don't know. Speaking of post-apocalyptic movies, do you guys have a favorite? Oh, probably 28 days later. Like, it's, it's fucking, it, it's awesome. That's all I got to say. I never have seen any, either of the later. You haven't seen 28 days later? No. Dude, that movie's sweet. Isn't there 28 days later and then 28 weeks yeah. later? But the first weeks. one was Danny Boyle, and that's what made it amazing. Yeah, the second's not bad, though. I, I, the first one's better, though. It, oh, yeah, it's definitely better, but... For, yeah. for a sequel from a completely different director, I thought it was actually kind of in the wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. Wally. Yeah, that that would count. Yeah, I don't know if it's my favorite, but I do enjoy Wally. That's I said your favorite. Fine, uh, you go then, because I'll have to think of one. Because mm-hmm. there are so many. Post-apocalyptic. Mm. I would say my most my most favorite as of recent was Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> it's a good one. It is. That was a very enjoyable film. Uh, the guy in the guitar with the fire. That was awesome. And those were all practical effects. I was like, damn. <laughs> I guess I, I really like... Uh, I like 12 Monkeys, too. That movie used to terrify me. Was <laughs> that movie... That movie... I, I tried sitting through it. I think I came in... like I came in like 20 minutes in and I was just lost. Yeah. I was like, what? Terry Gilliam will do that. I was like, what is going on here? You it's could have been of... lost even if you were there. <laughs> like, I... It's kind of creepy. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the music used to freak me out. Mm-hmm. Like, the, the theme. Like, the weird... Like, mm-hmm. it was unlike any music I'd ever heard before. And as a kid, you're like, what the fuck? Like, I've never heard instruments played like that. You know what? I'm just going to stick with Wally for now. There, there are so many that I'm thinking of. I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to stick with Wally. I said it. I'll stick with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like Wally. It's a very good film. Yeah. Disney Pixar knows their shit. S- someone had to give Fred Willard a job after he got caught jacking <laughs> off in a movie theater. Uh, why do you have to bring that up? I don't know. I like ruining children's <laughs> dreams. <laughs> I don't think children dream about that. Oh, yeah. Why would they <laughs> dream about that? They dream about Fred Willard. I just imagine a dad tucking his kid in. <laughs> like, Dad, you know what I want to dream about? <laughs> Fred Willard. Fred Willard's dirty old cock. <laughs> Good night, son. We're going to the institution tomorrow. <laughs> oh, we need to take you back there. I, I thought they were done with you, but no. <laughs> There's no such thing as rehabilitation. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. Is this the worst pod? <laughs> Worse than how? <laughs> In terms of fucked up shit that I've said. <laughs> yes. It's been quite a few. You Listeners, might... let, let me know. I'm genuinely curious. Oh my god. Because I have no... I feel nothing anymore. <laughs> Actually, no filter. <laughs> no. I'm going to do a rigorous scrub of this podcast. <laughs> Jake holds his hand over a fire and he goes, I feel nothing on the inside, nothing on the outside. <laughs> Everything dies. I'm dead inside like Courtney Love. <laughs> wow. Jeez. <laughs> See, Am I wrong? <laughs> she, she did it. Oh, God. She, oh, she totally killed let, him. Let's not get into these conspiracy <laughs> theories. <laughs> Kurt Cobain has nothing to do with this film. Nothing. Well, it, there's dead people in the film and... I remember He's arguing. With, I remember. Then arguing. we could talk about William Shakespeare while we're at it. Okay. You have a tie. Well, a tie. your tie. Yeah. So that automatically makes it a tie. Oh, I hate you guys. Oh, those are my jokes you're taking. That's <laughs> so fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You were well, gonna say something, Jake. I was just going to say, I remember arguing with a kid in high school, and he was like, well, they found a toe print from Kurt, and he pulled the trigger with his toe, and I said, then she pushed his fucking foot. <laughs> Jeez. 
And he just looked at me defeated, like, you're just not going to let me win this. And I'm like, she fucking did it. <laughs> Anyways. I bet you think Yoko Ono killed John Lennon. No, everybody knows that was Mark David Chapman. If John was smart, he fucking killed himself. <laughs> or Yoko. Yeah, he should have. She, she sings like a corpse. <laughs> <laughs> that Chuck Berry video is so good. <laughs> that look he gives him, like, wow. She she broke up the Beatles. Yeah, she's terrible. Yeah. Uh, just think how many more years we could have had of... That. Probably not a lot, no. because they hated each other at that <laughs> yeah. point. But I bet you could have gotten one more album. Yeah. Or a reunion at some yeah. point. Yeah. A reunion at some point, but oh, nobody tells Ringo. <laughs> <laughs> Am I not one of you? Nah. Oh, jeez. Um, I was trying to think where this film actually was taking place. Was it in where? Where Turtle Beach? Uh, it has they to be on head- the coast somewhere. They make headphones. I hate you so much. Yeah, they make shitty headphones, by the way. <laughs> Um, I was going to say, uh, Turtle Beach, I thought was near Florida, maybe South Carolina, somewhere in there, but... I hope it's not Florida. I wouldn't want to go to Florida during the fucking no. apocalypse. God, no. <laughs> but, because they start out, you know they start in Yale, because he, that's where he picks up his brother and, and the girl, and I thought they went to Indiana for, because I thought he said that's where the cure was, Chris... Whatever his name is. Chris Pine? No. Uh, Christopher oh. Maloney. I thought he said the cure was in Indiana. So they went there. And then they went to Turtle Beach. So. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. More pros, more cons, kids? Oh, of course, I look up Turtle Beach and bring up the fucking headphones. Woo! Uh, I, I guess I got a con. Um, the, uh, I, I just didn't like the way that the, this, I don't know, just where the story ended up. It was a bit anticlimactic. It, that's what, yeah, that's yeah. what I wanted to say. Yeah, they kind of just get to the beach. And, and it's like, that's it. There was no, there was no, like, there was no real climax. Like, their main problem in the movie was that they were just trying to stay away from the virus. It was really all about the, the stuff and the people they encountered on the right. way to get there. There was no, there's no epic fight or there was no, like, crazy death or anything like that. Or... So, so would you agree with me thinking there's no real resolution? Like, they get there, but there's not, like, something that's like, oh, they're going to be okay now. Like, he opens a thing that's filled with cockroaches and it's like, well, there's no food. And at least the thing he's looking at, they're looking around and it all looks kind of, you know, they're not really grabbing shit or looking like they're okay at all. They're kind of just... We're at the beach. But really, did you think there was going to be salvation? Like, there seemed to. I think they were more just wanting to get to a place where they felt they could be safe. Yeah. But how do you feel safe in a place that doesn't have anything? Because, like they said, they knew ahead of time, and they talked about that they were going to have to go out for runs. Okay. I think it was more for me. It was just like there was there was nothing big. There was no point in the movie where it was just like... I don't know, like, if you're, if the movie's a mountain and you're climbing up to the mountain to the peak of the mountain, the climax, there was, it, it, it was just kind of like, there's some bumps here and there in the movie, but it never goes soaring up to the top and then well, going back down. Their know? faces didn't even really change when they got there. There was no look of like, oh shit, we made it. There yeah. was no smile, there was no, like, acknowledgement, really. They were just, we're here. And so that, too, is, I think, they know, like, there's the burden of, one, it it's not exactly what they're thinking. Like, he, he seemed happy to be there, but at the same time, he knows all he's lost. He's like, I lost my parents. I lost my brother. He's like, I'm here with this girl who... Isn't well, putting out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is my hell. <laughs> well, you know, how many days were they on the road from when when they, they ditched left Pine? Because 
Because, you know, how, how long does it take for that stuff to sink in? And it, at that point, it probably hadn't. So you just kind of, mm-hmm. you're just kind of numb, you know? And also, it, it, you knew these people weren't going to be the ones to find the cure or anything. Right. So they're kind of dealing with the situation they have. I'm like, not saying I wanted the motherfucker to do a cartwheel when they got there. I'm just like, any acknowledgement, like, and we're happy we made it, like, there was none. Like, no. They weren't even together. Did you notice that? Like she They walked into a shop together, and then he walked around the rest of the beach. Yeah. yeah. And she just was doing her own shit. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I don't... One of you fuckers are dying. Somebody's doing something. Like, I I don't know. Like I said, I was like, it got to end soon, but I was... Yeah, I'm kind of with you. I get... It, it, it wasn't resoluted the best, but at the same time, I mean, what do you want them to do? They're not going to magically... Well, you, you'd the think, though, after sharing an experience like they did, they would have at least grown a little closer together. They would be talking more. You know, fucking anything. Yeah. Instead, they're just they're two distant people. But that's how they were when they started. And you know what? That's kind of just how she became. She even became somehow more distant as the movie went on. Which I found it hard to believe because if you're in a situation like that and you share common experiences, you guys have been through similar shit. Like that. That in all, in my opinion, that would bring you closer together. Even after his brother died, she didn't even fucking say shit about it. Nah, she's she? like, "I'm sorry that happened. You know, it's kind Nothing. of a fucked up thing that you had to do." And it know. was just that's business needed to be done which she's not she's not wrong no. but even I like you don't th- there's a, a time and a place where you need to at least show that you have empathy because, show a shred of humanity yeah because you're a fucking human being like yeah I she sucked that was they either made bad. her into a sociopath and it was intentional or they just sucked at fleshing her out like yeah yeah but I was going to ask, um, I know you have a brother. Yep. Say he was infected. Could you shoot him? Um, is he talking shit this day? <laughs> sure. He, he has the keys. And he's like, if you want him, you have to get him for me. He would shoot me <laughs> if I wasn't infected. <laughs> uh, no, I... I don't think I could. I, it'd be hard. See, which like, is why I empathized with his character when he was put in that situation. I'm like, that'd be that'd be fucking tough. Even if he was acting like a dick, like Chris Pine was, I, you still had reservations about it. He's your brother, right? Yeah. Because um, you mentioned earlier, Pine talked about what he had to do, and Danny hasn't done anything. He had to go get Danny at Yale. He had to go through all that crap to probably just get there. He had to leave his parents in their house. They, You see, like, a dream, which you think is Chris Pine's dream, but then it turns out Danny's. And you see what looks, probably what his parents looked like. They were just on the bed, lethargic, can't move, covered in all those bruises and the blood hemorrhaging. So... It's like, oh, just to leave your parents like that. But, I mean, you had to look out for yourself. And you know they're too far gone. It'd be tough. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've talked to my parents about, like, you know, getting old, dying, and stuff like that. And they've always been pretty, you know, like, oh, you know, when I'm gone, I'm either in a better place or I'm not. Just throw me in the backyard and, you know, bury me or whatever. <laughs> they're pretty, like straightforward with it like don't you know spend a lot of time grieving like you know it's a part of life they've always been good about establishing like what about me fucking watership down (laughs) nothing teaches a kid about death like that fucking movie that really sets a precedent for the rest of your life (laughs) (laughs) yeah but uh i don't know they've always been good about like you know there'll there'll come a time just enjoy it while it lasts and you know but then again Hearing that and being in the situation two totally, two totally different, different things. things. Alright, well, I, I hate to end on a down note, but I think we should get into our uh, ratings now. Okay, if the listener isn't on himself, <laughs> it's like, wow, this is fucking dark. Or they're, or, or they're hanging themselves, but like just slightly, just enough yeah. that they're enjoying they're it. They're doing the carotene thing. <laughs> Call that to walk a 
of life. The walk of life. I don't know. <laughs> Got a little urban. What? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, since this was recommended to me and it was my pick, I'll go first. Um, like, like we said, pros, Chris Pine. I enjoyed kind of the, uh, the urgency that they sometimes had, like in the condo with all those people. Um, the urgency they dealt with when one of them was infected. Um, I enjoyed the isolation because it, it was a very small cast. And I actually kind of enjoyed that, that you weren't seeing so many people that wasn't cluttered like World War Z or something like that. It just is, it's pretty much was these four, maybe you could say six, including uh, whatever, Christopher, whatever his Maloney. name, Maloney and his daughter. Um, and, and just kind of the realism that it brought, like, you know, they are willing to lead people. It's like, yeah, that looks like a dick move and you can call the character a dick, but they're doing what people would do if they want to live and yeah you can look down on these characters like they're assholes but you know what that that's what somebody would do i would leave jake in a heartbeat if it meant i would live <laughs> if i knew he was infected or he could slow me down and get me killed i'm sorry jake no, if, you're you're, bad. if you're in that instance actually i would feel bad like i would feel terrible doing it and i'd probably be like i'm gonna burn in hell for this but if it's something I feel it's for the betterment of everyone else, I may have to do it. I, I would at least do it. I would at least leave you stuff to survive, though, like he did with Piper, where he gave her. He goes, "Hey, here's some blankets. Here's some water. Here's some food. Have fun dying a slow, painful death." Well, he goes, "Towns that way, two miles. You get going now. You can make it there. Find a bed, relax, and let it happen." So, he he gave her a chance. A chance of what? Well, just dying comfortably. Because there's not much they could do. I would have just said end it now. I was just going to say that. But she just... didn't want to. I, I, and I don't know if he could have brought himself to do it. And you know Kate wasn't going to do it. And She's you know his close. brother wasn't going to do it. She would have nudged somebody and said, yeah, you do it. Yeah, she would have given yeah. him that look. Cause, you pussy later? <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a solid 6.7. Drew? Uh, yeah. I like like I said before. I had never heard of this film. Um, I I genuinely enjoyed Chris Pine's performance. I think he was he was exactly the guy he needed to be in this movie. Um, the the leader of the bunch. Uh, you know, had to make brash and rough decisions when he needed to. Um, the the pacing was good. Um, I mean. The, the performances by some of the other actors and stuff I wasn't really too keen on the the Kate chick was pretty much worthless um, there was no there's no real climax in the movie um, it was it, as far as a post apocalyptic movie goes it was it was okay um, I, I one thing I did I did really enjoy that that the film touched on was the realism of the situation and, and how these people are coming to grips with it, uh, how all these people are, are dead and, and the fact that they have to scavenge for supplies and how raw and gritty it does get uh, when you're out in the middle of nowhere and you come across a, a, another car um, scavenging for gas. Like, you're going to have to make decisions that you never thought you'd ever have to make in a situation like that. Um, and that being said, I, I you know, it, it, it was okay. Um, I don't, I don't know if I'd watch it again. Uh, I, I'd give it a 5.7. Um, I agree with pretty much everything both of you said, which is interesting because you rated it higher and he rated it lower. I don't know. Hey, that, um, I was not as tough on Ghostbusters as you were, and we both rated it a 4. Yeah, that's true. It, well, it's, I like to, to rant each and rave a yeah. lot. Uh I'm thinking I'd be at about a five point eight, since five is you know five is your your average movie. It's it's a C if you want to go by like grading. It's like a C. Right. Uh, so don't let five point eight scare you off. I I think it's it's fine for a post apocalyptic like you know breakout like contagion type of movie. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it's been done better. It has. Contagion. Yeah, but it's not the worst one I've ever seen. No, but no. is it one that you would seek out? Maybe if that's your wheelhouse, like if you, for whatever reason, get off on viral outbreak movies. <laughs> <laughs> that's a weird fetish. Then you get your lube and you go to town, I guess. <laughs> There's plenty for it in this film. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pine's good. Pine's actually pretty good. Uh, it's interesting to see him doing a character that isn't Kirk, because I'm not really that familiar with his work outside. I was going to say, besides, I think I've only seen one other movie with him in it that he wasn't That Lindsay Kirk. Lohan movie? What Lindsay Lohan movie? I thought he was in a movie with Lindsay Lohan. I know he was in one with Reese Witherspoon. Oh, was he? Yeah, him and Tom Hardy were in This Is War. They were oh, yeah. for... What Lindsay Lohan movie? I don't know. I thought maybe. I know he's going to be a Wonder Woman, though. Yeah, I think he'll do well. I think so, too. I, I think he's pretty charismatic, and he knows when to actually, you know, be at a high level and when to kind of play, like, a supporting kind of role. Uh, but enough about Chris Pine. Uh, my main issue is... You had two characters that weren't really characters much. You, you had a brother that didn't want to do shit. You had a girl that may be a sociopath. <laughs> um, you had Piper Parabo, who was insufferable to me. Like, she drove me insane. I get that she's doing something that... She's doing something that a human would do in that situation. I'll give you that. But at the length of time that I thought had gone by, I thought most of the people that would do that type of situation would be gone by. Mm -hmm. That's just my own personal thing. I don't think you'd make it to that point. But uh, pacing's actually okay. I think pacing is what makes it a notch above your average movie, is it knows when it's kind of wearing its welcome out, and it'll kind of pick up a little bit. And, it'll, it'll cut to another scene. Right, and even though we kind of you know talked a little bit about the ending being pretty anticlimactic, it got to it at the point it should have got to it. Mm -hmm. It didn't go ten minutes too long, it didn't come too quick, or suddenly it it made sense to me. Um, that doesn't sound like a shining endorsement at all. Um, which it's, it's... it's. Well, that's what most women say to you. I got nothing to say. <laughs> uh, you're a piece of shit, and go fuck yourself. I to give Jake credit for this film, though, we took bets on which of the four main would live. And Jake was right, so... Yep. The only thing he was, was right about right. tonight... Yeah, and Drew was half right. Drew was half right. And it's, I guess I was half right. I predict, predicted one that was going to live, but... But, uh... It's okay. Like, if it's on cable... Yeah, check it out. Or... Or... Now we're getting into something new we're doing this week. Um, for Until the end of August, since I was able to find this movie, you know, reasonably priced, I decided we're going to do a giveaway. Woo! So, here's how this is going to work, and I will post it on our Facebook. Um, there is a game out there called Plague Inc., it's a mobile game. You can download it on your tablet. I think you can play it on the computer. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing is, is you have to build a virus or a bacteria. You, you build a disease, and you try to wipe out the world. So that's that's the main purpose of this game. Is you try to try to transform this so that it can just kill as many people as as you would like. That's what Reagan <laughs> did with HIV. Wow. All right. As I say, this is this is like a game up Jake's alley. He, you yeah. know. But, anyways, what we want you to do is play the game as many times as you want, and then screenshot your score at the end of the game. It, it'll give you a score saying, you know, hey, this is your, you know, if you hit next say twice after the game ends, it'll give you a score. It'll give you a rating. We want you to screenshot that. And then either email us at tjdmoviereviews at, at gmail.com or personal message us on our Facebook page. Yep. Highest score gets the game. And remember, you need game, to... Game, you mean. Or movie. not the game, the movie. My mistake. But you need to name your virus TJD so nobody cheats or just gets mm -hmm. a score off the internet or something. Yep. 
we need to be able to see the name because it, it'll tell you it's like it'll say virus TJD then it goes through all the the scores and that and gives you one at the bottom. You can do it on any difficulty that you want. Doesn't matter. Just has to be a bacteria. So if you actually own the game, you unlock the other viruses. But since we don't want people to have to shell out money, right? You start with the bacteria. You have to do a bacteria. Yeah. Everybody could easily use the bacteria. Yep. So. so without having to purchase the game. So yeah. Um, like I said, I'll put the, all those instructions on Facebook. But I just thought, you know what, this would be fun. We'll pay for shipping, and we'll even sign the cover. What you know, if you guys like. Or we could sign a piece of paper and shove it on the inside. <laughs> so I just thought people would like a freshly used movie. It could include the ear of a small child. <laughs> Jeez. Now watch some psycho. <laughs> like, hey man, let me get that ear. <laughs> I want a necklace of them. <laughs> yeah, we we could sign it or yeah. you know give them give them something. Yeah, something signed by us or something. Yeah. Like, we could sign a piece of paper and put it in there, and it's not a big deal. Yeah. But, anyways, we just thought that'd be fun to have a giveaway, finally. So, like we said, this will go until the end of August, so some people who don't listen right away, because this won't be up until the weekend, most likely. So. This is the big test to actually find the people that are listening. Yeah. Yeah. This is a call to action, bitches. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, hopefully you have fun with that. We we hope to see some scores at least, but yeah, you showed me yours. You're pretty good. Yeah, I don't I, think I could. I get killed seven point one billion people. Stupid Iceland. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Hey, maybe that's where you need to go. Be away from viruses. Yeah. What happens if you started at Iceland? Does it just die immediately? No, because it's a port and airport island, so it would go out both those. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. But. But their medicine's better, so it'd be harder to get started. Anyways. In lighter news, <laughs> I want to give a, a shout out to Fred and Sid for being married for 15 years. Amazing. Congrats. A listener of our pod. Yeah, it's nice to give a shout out to them. So. Good friends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, well, Jake, what is your pick for next week? I am picking a movie that kind of went under the radar from the Wachowskis, believe it or not, called Cloud Atlas. Tom Hanks, Halle Berry. Yep. I expect to get in heated arguments with both of you. It's a two hour and 40 minute movie. Mm-hmm. I'll probably be my first complaint. <laughs> uh, and I will deflect it. Okay. Anything you'd like to add, Drew? Uh, yeah, for my next pick, we're watching the entire Band of Brothers. <laughs> I'd actually be okay with that. <laughs> you know, I watched that like five times in high school. Because our teacher would be gone for like track. Oh, the whole show? Yeah. They'd be gone for track. So like every track meet, they're like, eh, Band of Brothers. It's like, I've watched this. We're, we're dealing with world history. Why am I watching Band of Brothers? Remember how much of an asshole Ross from Friends is in that first episode? He, he's a whole asshole through the whole series. Yeah, that guy's a piece of shit. Oh, David Schwimmer, that's his name. I can't yeah. remember it because he doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> Alright, um, so like and subscribe. Uh, share. We appreciate sharing. Yeah, word like of it. mouth is literally everything we've done Got really it. to yeah. get the pot out there. We're really in buy on that word of mouth. Um, There's more episodes up on Libsyn. Uh, the downloads have kind of dropped off this month, but people are busy. It's summertime. And, yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. But they're there. When winter comes up, you would curled up right next to your fireplace, listen to some TJD movie reviews. Horrifying thought. <laughs> <laughs> or watching movies. Yeah. <laughs> watching good movies. All right. Um, for all of us here this week at TJD, I'm Ty. Jake. And I'm Drew. Bye.